What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy MM2K back again with another one, and this is one of my special journal entry videos. All right, and the game this time up is Ghost Recon Breakpoint. In my previous video, I did uh, Borderlands 3. And I do these videos to give you guys a peer into the MM2K gaming world a little bit more than I normally would have. You know what I'm saying? Try to make things a little bit more transparent to help fight the silly narrative that MM2K don't play no games. You know what I'm saying? Um, for those of you that want to follow that idiot herd, you continue to do so. You know, you have the freedom to be as dumb as you want to be. <laughs> but for the rest of us that want to be embedded in reality, well, here you go. And again, the purpose of this is for you guys to take a look into how I evaluate games, the structure in which I do so, and help you take a look into the type of games that I play. Because I, I got to be real with you guys. I don't play everything, and I don't like everything. And I'm not going to pretend to be that way. You know what I'm saying? I am not the all-seeing eye for anything anything and everything out there that you may want to play all right i'm particularly uh, a fan of hardcore content you know i like shooters i like open world games i love rpgs you know what i'm saying i like adult theme games like a ghost recon breakpoint you know what i'm saying stuff like that and i love challenge you know what i mean so i don't play games for a cinematic experience i don't play games for a story i award things like um atmospherics like if you're trying to tell a story i don't care about the dialogue between character a and character b i want to know if the atmospherics the, uh, the airiness or the explosiveness of the environment helps add to that sense of urgency that is in the game to add to the uh 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 um uh, to add to the tactical sense or, or the challenge. All right, so let's get into it. There goes some gameplay for my Twitch video, you know what I'm saying? Sorry I couldn't fit the whole thing in there, um, you know, but you, you'll, you'll catch the drift of what we're doing. And I'm playing here with my brother, uh, J-Dubs, and my brother, 706 Gamer. We're having a blast with this game. Now, just to give you guys a peer into how I, how I evaluate games, first and foremost, as I've told y'all before, I break things up into four pillars, okay? And those four pillars are visual implementation, product placement, game death and game mechanics. As a uh, reminder, visual implementation are the graphics and the physics of the game, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the product placement is, you know, how was this game advertised and how does the finished product fit into what the what we were told the game was going to be. Did it exceed um, our expectations, meet our expectations, or fall short? You know what I'm saying? Game depth, to me, equates to level design, game length, replay factor, and broad appeal to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? And when I say broad appeal, I don't mean so much to people that, would normally, that wouldn't normally that would normally play this type of game, but people that are fans of the genre. Can, is there going to be um, broad appeal to them? And then... In addition to that, if it does, you know, if the appeal does leak outside of the people that normally like that genre, you see what I'm saying? Um, how well will it be received out of that? Because you get bonus points for going out of the norms as far as my rating system is concerned. Unless I have game mechanics, controls, movement, basic instructions, are they in the game in bugs? You know what I'm saying? So let's go over what I've given this game so far. Um, so far, I've got 12 hours... Uh, 12 hours and 15 minutes in the game, right? Uh, and to, just to give you some of my world, real world stats, I'm in the Ubisoft um, application right now. I'm only 7% 7, 7 complete and I'm 12 hours in. You know what I'm saying? I've made over 33,000 in the currency. It doesn't feel that way in the in-game currency. I got 160 PVE hit kills. I killed five wolves already, man. And we will talk about that a little bit. My gear level was 43. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and my longest kill distance is, is 254 meters. So just some fun facts there. You know what I'm saying? Um, with that being said, 
let's get into the pillars and how I feel about this game so far. 7% in, but with 12 hour, over 12 hours in. Visual implementations, I give it 8.5. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think the textures, the landscape, everything looks great. I know there's been some issues that have been expressed as far as the, the dialogue and the dialogue looking dry and all the other stuff. I mean, I still think some of the even the textures and, and some of the facial expressions there still look good you know what i'm saying but i don't this is ghost recon this isn't ghost rpg maker <laughs> you know what i'm saying so i don't care about that and i and me particularly <sighs> this is a shooter tactical shooter 99.9 percent .9 of my time is spent doing the shooting and gathering loot I don't, I haven't been one of those people that spend that much time in the dialogue. So, you know, again, looking for different strokes for different folks. Um, visuals look more lifelike in this one opposed to Ghost Recon Wildlands as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? Uh, that's it. Let's go to the product placement. Um, I gave that an eight and a half as well so far. Much more tactical than what was advertised. You know what I mean? They, they didn't do the best job in letting you know what they were putting in your hands and how this was differentiating itself from Ghost Recon and more importantly, the division. I think you had a you you, you had a you had an overlapping there between that and the division and not enough not enough separation in prior installments. I think this one finally does the the the, the most to bridge that gap. Or not to bridge the gap, but to widen that gap, which is actually needed. You know what I'm saying? With the tactical sense and the stealth that's involved as well. Um, a lot of action, though, even though there's a lot of stealth. There's a, I want to say there's a lot of pre-planning stealth involved. Like, you don't want to just go into a facility with 40, 50 people and think that you're going to uh, commando your way through it. No, this is this is less Arnold Schwarzenegger commando and more uh, Sylvester Stallone Rambo, where you got to you know, site rep everything and put out the drones and check out your surroundings before you, you go too deep into it. But as you can see on the screen, there's also um, inner travel uh, battles that you're going to have with different people in the game that keeps the action pumping. You know what I mean? So it's not stagnant at all. Uh, with that said, as far as the game depth, that's where a lot of the nooks and crannies go into my review. Um, I feel that the positives so far are enemy engagement is tense. The challenge requires more of a tactical sense. No running and gunning here because bullet damage is real. And that's bullet damage not only do you give, but that you receive. All right. Um, and that goes into your gear score. And I'm going to talk about that because I know there's been some questions brought up about gear score. Um, the negative things, however, is the input commands on controller are not always the most responsive. And I'm saying that in regards to PC. Um, I really haven't vetted this part out in console uh, as far as the console is concerned. But I mean, on the PC, the, the input control is not the best response of all the time. Mission comprehension is made tougher than needed due to messy pin system. There's a pin system in the game where they try to make this thing more realistic all the way around. And as you get tasks that you need to do, they're like on these post-its or they might be in files. And as you want to uh, keep the more prevalent and more relevant missions that you're gonna do right now, in the forefront, you do this pin system and it's kind of messy trying to navigate through it and it, it causes some confusion. Um, but overall, I gave the game depth 8.75 within my 12 plus hours. Um, and lastly, game mechanics. That's where we talk about the bugs and stuff like that. Um, I gave that an 8. There's minimal glitches notice. I mean, there has been some. There, there was one time in particular where I got stuck in this one part. Not uncommon for a Ghost Recon game, and it wasn't detrimental to my advancement. Um, didn't happen regularly, right? So, not a big deal, you know? because everything else was smooth for me. So overall, when you average everything so far at this point in the game, I'm at 8.4. I'm at 8.4 with the game. I feel overall great experience. I love the scale of the game, the loot and the challenge. Um, however, the objective organizing is too messy. Now, this is something new that I'm doing where I, I counter what I'm saying with other um, rebuttals, or I don't want to say rebuttals, but different sides of, of this game. Now, there's been a lot of talk about um, two things in regards to this game. This game is getting a lot of heat about microtransactions, and it's also gotten a lot of heat about its loot system. So let's first talk about the microtransactions. The whole microtransaction um, debate, I feel, is a farce. Um, maybe I, I, I haven't looked at this footage uh, while it's while I'm recording this. But you should be able to see that 
pretty much every encounter I'm getting a new loot item a new weapon or a new piece of armor and you get so much of it you literally have to stop every five minutes and figure out what you're going to keep what you're going to sell you know what i'm saying what you're going to break down into materials to where the microtransactions i didn't even know i didn't even really notice it, how robust it was until i saw someone else's video so again i think it's more to do with people with agendas looking for something fishing for something they have agendas they hate microtransactions that's on them you know i i really don't care i don't need microtransactions in this game you know what I'm saying? Um, and I think anybody with the amount of stuff that you get will be a fool to use the microtransactions outside of skins. Um, the second thing that I want to talk about that's getting hammered in this game outside of my particular review is the loot system. Um, there's gear scores involved with this game. And a gear score equates to how much damage you can take and how much damage you can dish out. Now, Admittedly, w one of the points that was brought up is you get so much stuff in this game that having a gear score really is pointless because as soon as you get something, you, a few minutes later, you might get something new that's that that's really higher. Look, there goes something else new that I got, another piece of gear. Um, and, it's, and it's three points better than what I have. You know, it's almost, I want to say maybe 5% better. And that happens a lot. You know, you'll get something that's 25% better and then you'll go five minutes later and something 25% better than that. I will admit that the gear system is very, very friendly as far as giving you good stuff. And that kind of does hamper the sense of accomplishment a little bit. If everywhere you turn, you're getting good stuff. So I do think it's just a matter of Ubisoft going into its algorithm. Look, there goes something else I just picked up. You don't need microtransactions in this game. Um, but what you what you what Ubisoft needs to do is they need to tweak the loot system and bring it down to where mainly the majority of the stuff that you get is maybe of the same level, maybe slightly lower, but it has different perks. So they just gotta adjust that a little bit. However, the gear score is important because a point that was made is that you can literally take everybody out with a headshot. And that is true. That is true because this is more simulation than it is arcadey. Um, with that being said, if your your headshot and your ability to do it steadily is dependent upon skill and the type of gear that you have. So the gear score is a factor in that. And if you miss, trust me, in the more difficult areas, if you miss or even if you are successful, you're going to alert enemies and the enemies are more difficult in the harder areas. Meaning if I headshot somebody and I'm in a tough area, you know what I'm saying? And, and my gear score is only a hundred, but the area is 150 and the drone catches that, my ass is grass. My ass is grass. Because the drones and the vehicles, I was in this 150 area and I got my ass handed to me, man. So your gear score represents your chances of survival. Not just the damage that you can deal out, but the, your chances of survival. So it works a little bit differently in the division where di division is more RPG-ish because it takes several attacks to take something down. You could take, literally you could take down anything in one attack if your timing is perfect, but everything is not always gonna be perfect, okay? So I think the gear score is relevant. If my gear score is 43, I have no business in 150 area, period. Even if I do have an opportunity to take everybody out with 100, I mean with a headshot. You know what I'm saying? So it does play relevance. I just think people are making bad comparisons and people may not appreciate the tactical nature of this game. So, and that's fine. You know, you don't have to like it. I just wanted to put my version of what's out there so every so gamers can look at everything in totality and get a well-rounded sense of how this game is. So with that said, 8.4 is where I'm at 12 hours in. Granted, I'm only 7% in the story, but I put a lot of time in. There's so much to do in this game, you know, where that's plausible. Um, so stay with me. I'm going to try to do this every week with Borderlands and Ghost Recon Wildlands. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. Let me know what you think about it in the comment sections below. And with that said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.